this is Blake Hackbarth with Recruitment Hockey coming at you with another video. Today, I have to, uh, this is Memphis, have him introduce himself. Thought I'd make one of these videos um, just kind of going over, again, why recruitment hockey is important. There he goes. And, um, you know, what kind of, what coaches are looking for in players. So, today we're going to kind of talk about some habits that I see from different all different types of players in different places I am um, that coaches absolutely can't stand. And part of my job with recruitment hockey is setting players up to combat these problems. So bad habits are learned no matter what. How do we take those bad habits and turn them into something that's not going to be detrimental to my career? So to start, we're going to talk about body language. Body language is so important. If I, if you me as a coach, myself, see a player make a mistake and throw their head down, pout, give up on a play, or if they've got you know bad body language towards me or towards an assistant or towards a, a teammate uh, after a mistake, whatever the case may be, there's all sorts of different scenarios in which a, a player could have bad body language. And I get hockey's a frustrating game, and I'm probably just as guilty as anybody else when it comes to getting frustrated in this game. But... What can't happen is where it dictates how you play or how your teammates play. Or if you bring in, are you an energy giver or an energy taker? Energy takers are useless to a hockey team. Energy givers can offer something, even if they're not on their best, having their best game. They can still offer some sort of, of what would be the word, some sort of, help to the team, I guess, for lack of a better term. If you're an energy taker, you're completely useless. If you're an energy giver, I think that's Seattle Kraken's first ever goal. Sure it is. All right. Cool. Congratulations to the Seattle Kraken. Going back and watching that goal, it's, uh, why do bank robbers rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Why do goal scorers go to the net? Because that's where the goals are. And uh, yes, I did move this chair in front of me to have that kind of backdrop. Um, so, going back to what we were talking about, being an energy giver and an energy taker. Even if you're useless in a game, you're having a bad game, having positive body language is going to impact the team in a positive manner compared to a bad manner. All right, so it's a super simple, it takes no effort to hold your head up high and, and offer something to the team in, in terms of just being a positive teammate. All right, so that's being a having positive body language. Next on my list is talking back. Talking back is the most frustr one of the most frustrating things you can hear from a player. And so the when a player talks back to you, it's very it's a very slippery slope, a very slippery slope cuz you know, even if you watch my videos, I'm sure there are a million different ways that people do things in the game of hockey than I do. And I totally understand and I get that. But also, when you are a coach or you are a general manager or, or you know, some sort of authoritative figure, having a player go rogue on you, and you know, speaking back to you in a in a negative manner, is not only bad for the the player and coach relationship, but it's a bad look for the team to coach relationship. So what I mean by that is, I totally get it. It's a frustrating game, and I've had. You know, times where, yes, I've been frustrated and I've thought that I was right about something. But being able to be the bigger, I don't want to say bigger man, but the to be able to bite your tongue for the betterment of the team because all you're going to become is a distraction. If you want to be a distraction, again, you're an energy, energy, energy taker and not an energy giver. You are now deemed useless to the team based on, you know, just being a jerk. And so... Like I said, you could think you're right, and there's a very real possibility that you could be right. But having the the character and the selflessness to, you know, just figure that it's just not worth it's just not worth the team's, you know, um, it's not worth hurting the team over something so small. And so having having the ability to just bite your tongue and move on and not talk back because if one player hears you talk back maybe the next player does and then maybe another player does it's a snowball effect and it's just hurting everybody in the long run and so when you think of something putting others before yourself being selfless and 
knowing that for the betterment of the team, if I bite my tongue here, I look at my coach in the eye and go, oh yeah, coach, yeah, you're right. It's a super easy thing to do rather than, what are you talking about? You're wrong. What do you mean? I was in the right spot, right? Because that's probably not why they saw it. They want to coach you for a reason. So two things, body language, don't talk back. And then I want to touch on just language in general. I walk around a lot of hockey rinks and the language is really, really, really bad. Um, it's unfortunate and it's a very tough thing to to hear. And yeah, I, I get that a locker room is a safe space and you know, whatever happens in there is not for coaches to particularly know about or, or be a part of. Um, I think there's another goal, isn't there? Yeah, three, two. I think he went to the net again. All right, so what I mean by that is a conversations between 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds um, are really, they're, they're teenage conversations, I guess we'll put it that way. And so there's a lot of cussing and things like that. And um, some coaches are fine with that, some aren't, whatever. All right, so what I'm trying to get to is don't scream. Um, and if you're going to use negative language and, and language that is, you know, deemed derogatory in the sense of the F word or, or saying different cuss words in a, in a public building where there are children running around, uh, believe it or not, parents don't want their, their children to be hearing that. Memphis is crazy. Um, so just being cognizant of that. And you even, you even hear, you know, when a 13 year old comes into the lobby and drops an F bomb, like that's just a bad look. Um, I don't, I, I'm not one of those people that's really overly sensitive when it comes to p kids using cuss words and things like that. Um, but having the time, place and reason to use it. I mean, being frustrated and, and using a, a choice word, I get it, everybody gets frustrated with, I don't think there's one person watching this video that hasn't been frustrated and 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 cussed about it. Um, but you also have to take into account not being an adult and being in public buildings and and around who, who you never know. You it might be a coach like me who runs a, a scouting agency that I do, and you would never know it when I'm in an arena for a tournament. And you know maybe that's something I hear, and you never know. So. You just never know who's around, so just being cognizant of what kind of language you're using when it comes to cussing and swearing and whatever else you might use. So um, having intelligent conversations and, you know, if you are going to cuss, don't, but if you are, keep it between the person, you and the person standing right next to you, not broadcasting it for everybody else to hear, because people do not want to hear it. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion to have. Last one for today, complaining. Complaining is so frustrating. I mean, it's just, why, do, why does it have to happen? I, especially in hockey, like I get like, oh, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go to school tomorrow or I don't wanna do, I don't wanna do my homework. It, it, hockey is um, meant to be fun. And if there are things that you don't wanna do in hockey, I don't, I don't quite understand why you're playing. So when I hear complaining or, especially complaining like, oh, why am I not out this shift? Or can I get this shift? Or um, why are we doing this drill? When is, why does this apply to me? You just zip it and do it. Um, I think coaches are all probably doing it for the right reasons for the most part and trying to develop better human scholars, athletes and trying to make their game well-rounded, right? Hearing a forward complain about doing a defenseman, a defenseman drill is is nonsense because you should know how to play all five positions and you should be even if you're always going to be a forward being able to whenever you get stuck picking up the slack for a defenseman that just rushed the play being able to properly play that position even if it's not at a super high level but being able to understand it and skate backwards believe it or not there are kids that are 16 17 18 years old that can not skate backwards um so i mean building those skills and transitions and you know i'm talking about like the forward the defense kind of aspect of this but just complaining in general right you go into a lobby and you complain about the refs like 
I promise you that a 15 year old ref repping a squirt, a squirt game at 8.30 in the morning is not trying to fix the game. So they're like complaining from top to bottom. Parents complaining about refs, coaches complaining about efforts, um, players complaining about playtime. Just, just shut up, just play hockey. I mean, if you're complaining about going to practice, you probably shouldn't be a hockey player. You shouldn't be an athlete in general if you don't like to practice the, the sport. And I mean, Wayne Gretzky said it best. I mean, it's not work if you love it. And so being able to show up and it should be something that you want to do. You should be chasing the next person because uh, I'm pretty sure we all know we're not Wayne Gretzky and the great, in my opinion, the greatest hockey player ever. So we're, we're all chasing him. The only person that's not chasing anybody would be him. So, I mean, even guys like Connor McDavid, who are some of the best players in the NHL right now, they're chasing something. So having the ability to, you know, just suck it up. I mean, give us an hour a day. Give us two hours a day. Give us an hour of ice, an hour of workout, or, you know, whatever your team does, and 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 just do it. And so, you know, kind of going back. So body language, the, um, the language that we do use, the complaining, and the, uh, the back talk, the, the talking back. All right, those are all four really important, really fundamental things that every athlete should carry with them. And not just in hockey, but any sport and, and really in life. I mean, I wouldn't go up to, wouldn't go up to your boss and say, you know, I, I don't, why am I working on this? Or, or have him say, hey, you, you didn't do a good job on this project and just, you know, blame it on him or, you know, get all down on yourself, right? You know, you want to be better, better than you were the day before. So I think that kind of puts it all in, in, um, in words. It was kind of cool. You got to see a little bit of Memphis and, and Monty make their appearance. But um, like I said, you know, I, this is something I do every day you know, with recruitment hockey and constantly finding players and constantly recruiting, constantly scouting, um, constantly referring players to higher levels. And so these are just kind of some of the things that I have gathered that me as a coach want to see from players and the hundreds of other coaches want to see from players, especially the ones that are using my site. The first thing they'll ask me, what kind of kid is he? Does he get good grades? Does he, you know, does he work hard? Does he have a good attitude? Because there are, there's not a big difference between a lot of younger athletes and truly elite athletes, all right? So what I mean by that is, if I'm a really good, really good hockey player, say I was a tier two hockey player, all right? There's, another 150 tier three hockey players that aren't far behind me and if i'm the one that has that tier two ability but i'm a sour a sour personality and a sour person and a lazy person to be around an energy taker um there's enough guys that aren't that far from me that can take my spot and have a good attitude and give energy and not complain and and be a good teammate and have a good attitude so that's a way i kind of tie it all back together with that being said uh, i really liked making this video i love talking about stuff like this too and how to properly develop athletes through that aspect of the game so maybe i'll make some more videos like this um especially going over what coaches like to see because i think that's important for for players to truly know instead of just thinking they know um happy hockey season and Hopefully everybody's start to their seasons, if you've already begun, is going well. And please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're at 48 followers right now. If we could get to, I don't know, maybe 50. Maybe you like this video and we can get like, maybe like one or two likes. I don't think I've ever got more than four, but um, turn that notification bell on. Do it for Memphis, all right? He's a puppy. He wants to see his daddy succeed. So do it. If you can't do it for me, do it for Memphis. If you can't do it for recruitment hockey, do it for this guy because he wants more toys and treats. So thank you, everybody. This has been Blake Hackworth. Nice to see you, and have a great rest of your day.